Okay, hi, my name is Kip Thorne. I go by Kip, just like Madonna goes by Madonna. Uh, and I've been asked to answer uh, the most asked questions about black holes uh, on the internet. The first question is, why do black holes exist? Uh, because Stephen Hawking says they exist. <laughs> but actually it's because very heavy stars, when they die, they implode and their gravity is so strong that nothing can resist the gravity. And as the star implodes, it, it just gravity pulls it all the way in until the gravity becomes so extremely strong that nothing can escape the gravity's grip. It becomes a black hole. It's just the natural evolution, the inevitable evolution of heavy stars out in the distant universe. Let's look at the next question. Why do black holes emit radiation? Because Stephen Hawking says they do. In fact, uh, he discovered this radiation uh, basically because he and I went to Moscow, Russia uh, on a visit there in, I think it was 1972 or 71. This is a guy named Yakov Borisovich Zeldovich who told us that spinning black holes will emit, emit radiation, but obviously uh, other black holes, if they don't spin, they won't. But the, the spin of the black hole has huge amounts of energy in it, and when vacuum fluctuations, the fluctuations of, uh, that can never be removed, that are always there, fluctuations of uh, electric and magnetic fields coming in and out of existence, when they impinge on the black hole, the spin of the black hole uh, feeds energy into them and they become real particles and they fly away. Well, Stephen then went back to Cambridge and spent three months thinking about it and he realized that even a non-spinning black hole emits radiation because when it's imploding, when a star is imploding to form the black hole, there's a huge amount of energy that can be extracted during the implosion. And these vacuum fluctuations, uh, things that are, you can never get rid of, they feed off that energy of the imploding star and turn into real radiation. And that real radiation comes out and because gravity is so strong, it's held in the grip of the black hole for a long time, and it comes out even millions of years later. But it's an inevitable consequence of the fact that we are all bathed in vacuum fluctuations. Everything that ever could exist in the universe, uh, teeny, teeny bits of it that get easily transformed into real particles uh, when uh, the uh, they have energy to feed off of. Okay, so that's our next question is, why do black holes evaporate? That's because Stephen Hawking says they evaporate. He told us they evaporate. They evaporate due to emitting this Hawking radiation. There's a fundamental law that we call a conservation of energy, uh, which says that if radiation comes off, carrying away, it carries away energy. Energy is the same as mass, according to Einstein. And uh, as it carries away energy or equivalently mass, the mass of the black hole must go down. And ultimately, uh, if you wait long enough, longer than the age of the universe, uh, the mass of the black hole will go down. And at the very end, it'll evaporate in a very real brilliant flash of Hawking radiation. Hawking radiation is weak for giant black holes, ultra strong for tiny black holes. So, as it shrinks, the radiation gets stronger, and then a poof, according to Hawking, according to uh, the laws of uh, physics, as uh, first deduced by Hawking, uh, the radiation comes out and it causes the black hole to evaporate. Now let's see what's the next question. Why do black holes uh, slow down time? Well, not only do black holes slow down time, so does the Earth, uh, so does the Sun. And it's just a, a, because of what I like to call Einstein's law of time warps. It says that gravity is produced by the slowing down of time. And if anything has gravity, it's because time is slowed down near it. And everything likes to live where it will age the most slowly. And gravity pulls them there. And uh, so near the surface of the Earth, uh, we age more slowly than out in distant space by about one second in a hundred years. It's a tiny amount, but that's enough that that slowing of time near the Earth produces the gravity that we feel. 
Now for a black hole, the slowing of time is humongously bigger, and that humongously bigger slowing of time produces enorm enormously stronger gravity. And the fact that the gravity of the black hole is so exceedingly strong that nothing can escape tells you that the slowing of time when you reach the edge of the black hole, the horizon is completely slowed to a stop uh, right there where gravity is infinitely strong. So the, the idea is ha the two things go hand in hand, the slowing of time and the, uh, the production of gravity. Our last questions about black holes, why do black holes look like this? Well, look like what? Look like what you saw in the movie Interstellar? Uh, look like what you see in images that were produced by the Event Horizon Telescope. Uh, those are very similar images in the movie Interstellar and uh, the images uh, that are actually produced by this Event Horizon Telescope, which is a telescope that is as large as the entire Earth, but it consists of a set of, uh, of millimeter wave telescopes, telescopes that look at millimeter waves, uh, that are scattered over the Earth, and that all the data are brought together to form an image that is the image you would have had if you had a telescope as big as the Earth. And that's the only way you can really see a black hole, because they're so tiny and so far away. Uh, now, why is the image like you see uh, through the Event Horizon Telescope and uh, like uh, you saw in the movie Interstellar? That's because you have gas in the vicinity of the black hole. The gas is emitting radiation. Uh, and the black hole produces a shadow in front of the radiating gas. And so you see a black shadow at the center. And then you see uh, other uh, features that are associated with the bending of light rays around the black hole. Uh, we calculated uh, what it looked like for the movie Interstellar. It was actually, actually Oliver Jaynes, Paul Franklin, and his uh, colleagues at uh, DNEG, Double Negative Visual Effects House here in uh, London. Uh, they calculated it based on equations that I deduced from Einstein's laws of gravity. And so they did simulations based on those equations. Those simulations gave images that look very much like what is actually seen through the telescopes. So if you want to learn more about black holes, do what Christopher Nolan did. Uh, go browse the web. That's where Christopher Nolan has learned all about black holes and other things in science. It's a great place to learn. But there are also some good books, some of which I have written, a book, Black Holes and Time Warps, or the book, The Science of Interstellar. So I'm Kip Thorne, and I've had the pleasure of answering some of the Internet's most searched questions about black holes. <laughs>